Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for participating in the School Fall and Waste Sustainability Project webinar today. My name is Cassidy Campbell, and I'm with the North Central Texas Council of Government, and I will be moderating today's webinar. We will have two presentations today with time for questions at the end. Please welcome our first speaker, Stephen Sturdivant. Stephen is an environmental engineer at the Environmental Protection Agency's Region 6 office under the Sustainable Materials Management Program. Stephen graduated with a mechanical engineering degree from the University of North Texas and has over 10 years of experience in environmental protection. Stephen, I'll hand it over to you. Okay, so thank you for having me. Um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our program, uh, the Food Recovery Challenge. We do work with schools, so today I'm going to be talking about specifically our work with schools and how we can help them reduce food waste and, and what technical assistance we provide. So uh, here we go. We, we have a, a lot of uh, resources, pictures. This is one picture, for example. Um, let's cut the amount of food waste in half. That's kind of our national goal. Um, Moving on, uh, I think you know a great a great part of a program is to educate kids, letting them know that wasted food is wasted resources. It takes water, energy, and land. And there's a, a graphic on the left. It actually came from the United States Geological Survey. They have a 3D model um, uh, animation showing the level of water in the aquifers. Um, throughout the United States. Well, well this one has uh, um, an animation of an aquifer that, that covers Texas, and it shows the water level being depleted over time. It's, it's a very powerful visual that I think, you know, some kids at the proper age can, can comprehend and, and understand how wasting food is wasting water and, and we should save our food. So uh, we have uh, a lot more information on that. I give presentations to schools uh, all the time. Um, I'd be happy to talk more about that. And we have graphics, uh, simple graphics like the one on the top right that we, that we also provide. As far as how to reduce food waste, obviously the most preferred method is to prevent waste from being generated to begin with. And we do have some tools to help schools in that regard. Uh, we have um, a set of checklists, if you will. They're just like really short and quick and easy, one or two page checklists to give just some ideas of how you might be able to prevent food waste in your school. So we have one specifically for grade schools. You can find it on our website. If you search EPA Food Recovery Challenge, you'll find all of our resources there. Uh, there's some pictures on the right of some examples of what schools have done in the past. You know, they they um, talk to the students directly, for example, ask them to sign pledges. They actually show the waste to students. They have, uh, some have very impressive, very large wall graphics. They also, um, you know, give literature out, uh, talking to the students about what they're doing uh, as a cafeteria to reduce food waste. So I, I suggest going through that checklist if you look want some ideas for reducing food waste, and I can walk you through those uh, if you contact me. The One of the number one things that I suggest schools do is to perform a food waste audit, and it's super easy, and the kids love it because they love, uh, you know, getting their hands dirty and, and playing, playing with their food, right? So I'll go over a, a very uh, typical food waste audit. Here's just a very simple, fun graphic that kids can comprehend, and I'll, I'll walk you through kind of a typical food waste audit. So uh, we also have a guide I'll be, I'll be discussing. At the bottom, you'll see a table with four students standing around it. This is where uh, the students go to, instead of going to the trash, to dump their, uh, their leftovers after they're done it with lunch. They instead dump their leftovers at this table. And there's a volunteer with a clipboard talking to the student, interviewing the student about uh, their waste. The uh, table on the top is where the food waste gets hand-picked and sorted into orange buckets and weighed, uh, recorded there. 
and on the top left you have a volunteer also trading out the trash cans that is non-food items so he's uh, making sure that the, the trash cans are uh, keep getting replaced as they fill up and that that's it at the end you're going to have information from the interview as well as information from uh, the buckets super easy right so I wanted to show you just some uh, real pictures uh, and real examples of, of doing this. Uh, here's uh, one picture, for example. Sorry about uh, I, I didn't have any permission for the for the you know the faces, so uh, mind the the photo. But you can see the orange buckets in the background. You know they're all lined up. That there's the table in front, right where um, the students drop off their trays. You see a, a volunteer there um, sorting through the food waste. Okay, um, here is a, a picture of the interviewers interviewing the students, asking them, hey, we noticed you threw away half a sandwich. Please tell us uh, why why you ended up not finishing your sandwich. Was, is, is there any feedback you can give us as to uh, why you didn't finish it? And we write that information down so we can capture the reason why they're throwing away the food. So when you're doing a food waste audit, it's great to before the audit even before the audit day, you want to go and, and take a look at what is going to be typically served that day. Get an idea of what containers the food comes in, so that you know what's easy to separate quickly uh, at the buckets. Uh, so that gives you a, a pretty good idea of, of what categories to put on the buckets. Uh, you know, so for example. You know, let's say the, the top left, you know, you have the milk, you've got the the bread, you've got the peaches, and, you know, you've got the, the soup. So those would be, for example, four categories. Also, before the audit day, I've, I've learned to scope out. You want to scope out the cafeteria. Um, watch the kids enter during a lunch. Watch them leave. You know, which doors do they come in? Where do they congregate? You know, where is a place that's that's out of the way where you can set up your audit, where it's where it's out of the way, but but students um, are kind of familiar with that spot. That they're kind of already in the habit of throwing food away, kind of in that area. Look around to see where all the trash cans are, that sort of thing. And uh, be sure to collect the trays so you know exactly how many students you audited. Um, we try to capture every single student. Uh, we just create the the audit station to fit the crowd. That way we can capture everything. I wanted to show you um, just some examples of what uh, the buckets actually look like. You can see here, you can tell that there's different categories for these buckets and, and kind of what they look like. One category you might want to think about is unopened food. These, this is food that could potentially be donated, at, you know, as part of a, you know, a share table or after school program, or, or donating to a local, uh, you know, homeless shelter. This is these pictures can be very powerful in uh, gathering support for the idea of of starting some kind of donation program at your school. Um, a lot of people don't realize actually how much food hasn't even been opened yet uh, when when being thrown out. So that, that's a pretty powerful message. So that was all food that was tossed and not even, not even touched. Also, here's some examples of the interview sheets themselves. This is the, the volunteers with the, the clipboards asking, writing down the type of food, and then writing down the reason for loss, um, and, and collecting that data. Um, here are some charts uh, after um, compiling the data. Each chart represents a different food category, and as you can, uh, the, what's circled in red uh, is the tends to be the the popular reason why that food was either unfinished or thrown out. So, for example, in this survey, the apples were too bruised, the nachos too cold, the fries too dry, and so on. 
Uh, one, one great um, example I like to give of, of how this data helped reduce food waste is uh, the stir fry. Uh, the chef was actually involved in the audit um, himself, and he, he noticed right away that a lot of the stir fry was being tossed out, and the reason was the students thought it was too much sauce in the stir fry. So that was a um, super easy, eye-opening thing for him. He just never looked in the trash cans. He never even uh, got that feedback, and, and now he just tells his kitchen staff, hey, put a little less sauce in the stir fry. You know, they're saving money on sauce, and the kids are happier and they're eating their food. So that's a, that's one uh, example of an action that you can take as a result of these audits when you capture reason for loss. Um, the students, uh, they almost every time the students do an audit, they, it, it, I'm amazed as to how much they are now educated about food waste. Like this is the type of, of education that really sticks in a kid's mind and, and they can um, repeat that information back to you. They, they understand the concept. It's not just a memorization. Um, they get it, their eyes open. They, they even talk to their, their peers about it. And that's, uh, that's what this picture is about. These students uh, took the results of the audit and actually did a, a big presentation to uh, the other students. So lessons learned after doing this uh, a few times, you want to have consistent food names. So when, uh, you know, let's say you get a group of ROTC students, or, or maybe there's a student group, a sustainability student club that wants to help out with the audit. Whatever group of kids you're working with, um, tell them to use consistent food names. You don't want to call the, the chicken burger uh, a chicken sandwich, a burger, a sandwich, and chicken. You want to use one word in case there's other burgers or sandwiches. Make sure it's clear. Make sure it matches the, the bucket as well so that the data jive and you're not stuck with a survey full of food categories that you don't know if they're related or not. So, you know, hash those details out beforehand and, and tell them what words to use. Also, uh, when I first did an audit, a lot of the answers I got back was, I didn't like it, you know. Um, so obviously that's not uh, a helpful response, and we teach the kids, hey, if you know, give us reasons that we can actually use to make changes either to the menu or to the cafeteria or the portion sizes or whatever. Give us um, answers we can use. So be very uh, cognizant of that. You might get a bunch of vague answers, and if you ask the students to rebuttal. Um, you know, if if a kid says, I didn't like it, then we, we tell the volunteer, hey, ask the student why they didn't like it. What about the food did they not like? Also, uh, be sure to have a miscellaneous bucket just in case um, you don't have a category for it. Um, hide the trash cans. The students will, will look for a trash can, but if you only have the audit tables, you kind of tell, you have an announcement as the kids are coming in. You know, be sure to take your leftovers over to the table or you have signs. Typically signs are a little better. That way they're not like primed to, you know, to skew the, the data. Just have the signs where the trash cans were with a big arrow and they'll, they'll slowly, oh, I get it and I go this way and, and, and take it over there. You don't want to kind of, um, you don't want to let on what you're doing because you don't want them to change their behavior. So it, it's kind of a, kind of a, you know, finesse uh, that you got to do there. Uh, block the audit trash can as well. Students might come up to the audit table and try to throw their food directly in the trash can before it gets separated and measured and, and they're interviewed. Um, when the bell rings, like in high school, uh, there might be a, a mad dash. A lot of students just kind of sit there at the table after they're done eating their lunch. They don't put, throw their food away right away. They just kind of sit there and talk with their peers. Um, if you have some downtime, encourage your volunteers to go out and encourage the students to go ahead and bring their trash so that you don't have a, a big rush at the end. But make sure that the trash is being collected and surveys are being done at the table so that a supervisor can uh, monitor you know, and supervise, make sure that the, the volunteers are doing the job and that they're doing it correctly. Um, don't fill up the milk bucket. It'll get really heavy. Just 
uh, weigh it and dump it out when it's halfway full. The trash can will fill up pretty fast. A lot of plastic, a lot of you know paper containers, that sort of thing. Just have a volunteer ready to with. Uh, so you have two trash cans, one to always trade out with the other, um, and you'll be fine there. Uh, let the custodial staff know what's going on. Uh, they can kind of uh, help you, you know, give you some advice. Um, and once you're done weighing all the buckets, probably the milk bucket's usually the only one that, that gets too heavy. The other ones, um, don't put them all in one trash can. Food waste is pretty darn heavy uh, without all the trash. So, uh, you know, just check the trash can every once in a while, lift it, make sure it's not too heavy and you'll be uh, fine taking it to the uh, the dumpster in the back. So another thing that that I think is great for schools is, is this EPA waste reduction model. You can actually put in um, what your food waste uh, reduction is and, and equate it to pounds of carbon dioxide saved. So if you look at this uh, chart, you see kind of a, a bluish box on the left, we'll call it number one, and then another bluish box on the right, call it number two, kind of like a group of boxes. And they're separated by this kind of gray box, right? So on the left, you put in what you're currently doing. Let's say you're, you're landfilling, you know, 10 tons of food waste. And then on the right, let's say you want to source reduce 10 tons or maybe source reduce five tons and landfill the rest. And it'll show you what that new scenario, how much greenhouse gas emissions you're saving. Uh, that's that's what it'll do. It has uh, several categories, different types of food, and it's a very easy model. And I can show you. Just give me a call anytime. I can walk you through it. We also have another tool that can turn those uh, greenhouse gas reductions into other fun facts that uh, maybe students can grasp a little better, like how many cars were taken off the road because we now compost or we now you know source reduce. You know how many um, wind turbines installed? Is that you know in fun, fun uh, equivalencies that uh, we have available as well? So that's another super easy to use tool. Uh, we also have uh, just some fun you know wall posters. Uh, let me know if you want some. They're, they're kind of colorful and fun. Um, so we got those as well. Um, and everything that I talked about in this presentation about the food waste audit, we also uh, have just published a food waste audit guide. It, it has all these instructions in there, uh, all of these pictures, um, diagrams, you know, uh, example interview questions. Uh, it covers everything, and, it, and it's uh, very short and sweet, and um, you know, it's uh, self-explanatory. So we have that on our website as well. That I like to distribute, and we are trying to get schools, all businesses, anyone that generates food waste to voluntarily report to us once a year how much food they're reducing. So we're trying to get uh, folks to do that voluntarily. If you could help me get schools or, or other businesses signed up, uh, I would appreciate it. You can go to epa.gov slash smm and click on Food Recovery Challenge or give me a call. So that, that would help me greatly. And uh, that's what I'm here for. That's what my job is. My job is to help schools or any businesses uh, reduce food waste uh, through these tools or, or site visits, presentations, whatever you need me to do. Um, I can do it or try to. So that's it. My contact information is on the bottom, and I, I really hope to hear from all of you. Thank you for allowing me to present today. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. Um, as a reminder, um, we'll answer any questions for Stephen at the end of the entire webinar. And now we would like to welcome our second speaker, Vanessa Ellison. Vanessa is a green queen and an agent of change. She is a proud University of North Texas alumni with um, a degree from the Mayburn School of Journalism and a master's degree in international sustainable tourism. She is the Recycling Educational Coordinator for the City of Denton Solid Waste and Recycling Department. Vanessa, I will hand it over to you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here, and I'm, I am blown away by the information Stephen just gave. That was wonderful. Um, so I'll jump right in. 
I am going to talk about Denton Sustainable Schools. It is a program that we have here in Denton, and it actually, it, it com it's so many things put together. There is very, very large, so I'm just gonna try to break it down in a few simple uh, ways. So one of the main things that we do with Denton Sustainable Schools is we give tours of our landfill and our recycling center. So this is a map of what we have out there, and I'll kind of give you a virtual tour. Um, when we go in, we tell everyone about the landfill waste station to let them know that we are weighing our customers and our residents whenever they come in and out. All of our um, trucks, all of our fleet for the city of Denton, whether you see a garbage truck or a policeman, they all are getting their fuel from our uh, fuel station, we have a renewable fuel station and that's in the left corner if you're looking at the map right next to the uh, compass. So I always let people know that we have that uh, feature. Whenever people, whenever the trucks go through the landfill waste station, the next thing that you'll see when you're driving up, there's a wheel wash and that is from um, water from our wastewater treatment plant. That's in the back of this, so it's not on this map, but that's reused water that they use to clean off the tires so that our trucks aren't taking in any kind of contaminants or anything that can make our city streets dirty. And then I take them up on the landfill, and our landfill is very unique because we have an enhanced leachate recirculation system. That is a fancy way to say that we reuse the trash juice. So any kind of uh, water from the rain or any kind of um, liquid that's in the landfill from a Capri Sun or a Coca-Cola bottle, someone didn't recycle it, um, it gets recirculated throughout our landfill and that helps us save airspace. So what it does is it breaks it down. Right now, uh, the city of Denton is actually working to mine one of our older cells from the 80s and they plan to take out all of the plastics, metals, and paper that can be recycled. They took out a newspaper already, they tested it from 1984 and you could read it, it looked brand new. Back then, there wasn't as much plastic waste as far as plastic bags like we have now, but um, a lot of the things that are in there are in mint condition because there was dry entombment. There wasn't an ELR system or any kind of liquids to go through it. Um, so that that's pretty exciting and pretty a little bit controversial that we're doing that to try to save that space and reuse it. Okay, if you're looking on the map, you see the lines. There are some brown lines and black lines. That is a part of our compost um, operation that we have out there, and that's a partnership with our uh, wastewater plant treatment. And there, what, what we do is we take the brush from all of the homes we collected uh, for free, no, no charge to our residents. If they cut down a tree or are trimming their bushes and they put it out on the day of their collection, we will pick it up. We mix it with um, soil, and then we uh, add in the biosolid, which is a nice word for poop. And the kids always laugh when someone says poop, so there's always uh, sludge in there. We also sell it without sludge, so people use this for their yards. It's a fertilizer. Um, it's really good for gardens. So that's what you're seeing there on the map. If you see the little uh, place with the green top, the home chemical collection slash reuse store, that is an operation that we have right now that's pickup only. If you're a city of Denton resident, um, you can get items picked up from your home, if it's paint, bleach, batteries, uh, any kind of light bulbs, we pick them up for free to keep them from going into the landfill. Another really cool component of that operation is that there's a reuse store and um, that's open twice uh, every Wednesday and then two Saturdays out of the month and people can go in if they're residents and get four free items. So what they do is they save items. If I bought brand new paint and I didn't use it all, someone will be able to go in and get that paint for free. So that's a really, really neat um, feature that we have. Right now it's a collection um, type of operation and it's only for Denton residents, but we are hoping to expand it and make it a regional drop-off site in the future. Um, the blue building that you see with the blue top, top, that's our Pratt Recycling Material Recovery Facility. Pratt takes all of our recycling for our commercial and residential uh, businesses here. And that's a really cool facility because inside we have a really neat classroom with a window so that people could go and see what's going on in the plant. It's a really uh, fun thing to do. Whether you're two or 92, people love to look out into the plant and see everyone working and see what's going on. Um, on the right of the map where you see the no public 
access and you see dino dirt cells in different colors, that is represents the mulch that we sell. We have, I believe, seven different colors of mulch, uh, black, sienna, red. Um, the black is actually the most popular, <laughs> and we sell that mulch as well to our residents. We have a lot of um, wood, a lot of wood that comes to the landfill so that we reclaim and reuse for um, either dino dirt or for um, the mulching. And then you see the gas to energy generator. Through, throughout our landfill, if you're up on top of it, you'll see there are straws in the ground. I always tell children, these are straws that are sucking up all the methane gas, and what they do is they're turning it into energy. And um, that generator, we only have one, but it powers 1,600 homes. So it's really, really neat. It's really cool. Uh, we hope to get two more to expand that operation, and that's a partnership with our Denton Municipal Electric as well. So I'm going to go on to the next slide and tell you a little bit more about Denton Sustainable Schools. So as I said, one part of it is we give tours. We also um, go out into the schools, myself, and I have a recycling education intern. Um, his name is Mark, and he's really awesome. If you see the dinosaur there in the picture, Mark has one of the fantastic duties of getting to be Recycle Stories Rex. Uh, we credit a lot of our success here from being able to market and put a name and a face to recycling. Um, and right now, that's, that's Mark and myself, and it's really fun to be able to go out and talk to different students and share our messaging. Uh, we've been pretty solid waste and recycling heavy right now, uh, but actually we just got moved under the umbrella of sustainability, so we are going to get to tie in some of our other utilities and um, sustainable practices that we have in the city to be able to teach um, to students. So right now we're informal educators. We go in and uh, we talk about anything from monitoring their lunches. Um, what we do, we have a, a liquid spin that we give them. We're really, really, really trying to push carton recycling right now because that's a new item that we're able to accept in our single stream recycling. We want everyone to do it, particularly our schools, because a lot of the schools have milk during lunches. So we go in, we give them a liquid spin, we train their green teams or their custodial staff so that they know what to do. By emptying that liquid into the bin first and then recycling the carton, it actually really helps um, with the waste part of it. With the trash, it's not as heavy, and there's not liquids laying it down or spilling anywhere, so it's really helpful for them, but also it's helpful to have those uh, cartons go in the right bin. It's really neat whenever we go and we watch the students um, when we monitor their lunches because we're able to see them make um, a conscious effort and conscious decision to recycle. And so uh, that's one of our big things that we've been working on. But Sustainable Schools started in 2004 as a pilot program. And when it first started, um, they were just going in to teach students to see um, kind of if they could grasp the concept of environmental education and how it would affect their home life or how it would affect their school life. And they couldn't tell if it was changing residential recycling, but the schools that participated had a very big um, recycling presence as far as their recycling weight. So now within sustainable schools, what we do is we look at their weight. So we um, give every school that participates they have a chance to earn funds based on their participation. 50% of that is through uh, their recycling weight, so weights per student. And then the other part of that is um, how much environmental education efforts they've done throughout the year. So any kind of programming, any speakers, any field trips, any um, movies, lessons, readings, anything that they do that falls under the umbrella of sustainability, they can get points it and they report it to us and then at the end of the year uh, they get to be rewarded for it. So actually right now we're gearing up to do our very big um, check ceremony where we go out to the schools and give the top schools checks and we give schools to, we give checks to the most improved and teacher all-stars. So it's a really uh, rewarding program and I think it just helps fuel and encourage more environmental education. So here I have a few pictures of things uh, going on that we do. Up top in the left, that is a picture of David Hunter. He is one of our uh, Pecan Creek Water Reclamation plants. 
heroes. He knows everything that there is to know about water. And so this is a picture of him giving a tour to a homeschool group. In the center, that's one of our guys, Ramon. We are out at Careers on Wheels, which is a really fun event that we do throughout the year at the schools. Right now we have 43 schools in Denton ISD with plans to expand. And what Careers, Careers on Wheels is, we go out and we talk about truck safety with the students. And um, it's really, really fun to see them be able to get close to the truck and we can explain to them exactly why you know, they could get hurt or exactly what they should do when they see a truck. Uh, to the right, you see Rex there um, hanging out with some students that may be from one of our Scout Days. That's an event that we do um, every spring with all the Girl and Boy Scouts in our area to encourage them to come out. And it's almost like a big science fair. It's really fun. We do a lot of environmental games, and um, we let them touch the trucks as well. And so that's super fun. In the bottom, we have a picture of one of our Teacher of the Years from last year who won for a lot of um, sustainable efforts and education throughout her classroom. In the middle, you see a picture there. That's the touch of truck setup where you see the cones and the students behind. And uh, Ramon is getting ready to lift up the bin to show them how strong those claws are. And then to the left, there's another picture of Rex. Um, Sitting Sustainable Schools is growing, expanding, and changing. Right now, it's kind of a two and a half person um, operation because on the sustainability side, we also had a partner um, who checked all of the Denton Sustainable Schools emails and wrote out our monthly newsletter, and she recently left, and so that position's open if anyone's listening. <laughs> so we are looking to fill that and get uh, that component back, but it's a very fun and rewarding um, type of career to have because you get to see the light bulb go off for adults and children to see that what they do matter and to see that their efforts um, can make a difference globally. And that's the part that I really try to uh, bring home for everyone. So that's all I have. If anyone has any questions, comments, criticisms, concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. I would love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, now is the time for us to answer any questions. So please feel free to type any questions you have into the chat question uh, is, are there green teams at school? There are, and actually they, they are pretty diverse. We have some green teams that are made up of, of administrators, custodians, and um, staff, and then some green teams are completely 100% student-led. Some are a mix of teachers and students, uh, but most schools do have them because pushing that message to all of the grades is so heavy. They want to be able to have a nice team and a lot of people to help them get the message out. All right, that looks like it's the end of our question. So thank you again to Vanessa and Stephen and to everyone who joined us today. Um, as a reminder, today's presentation and recordings will be made available on our website. And this webinar is closed. Thank you. <laughs>